Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome again to our Pentecost online retreat. I'm Rochelle, a missionary assigned in Tagaytay. How are you? How was your prayer this morning? We will continue again to deepen with our theme in today's retreat. I have come to bring fire and how I wish it were blazing already. This morning, the experience of prayer for me was a gratitude to God. It's true that in prayer, the Holy Spirit purifies us with our ways that are still far from God's ways, and He enkindles in us the fire to live the mission. We saw in the disciples of Jesus, when they were in the upper room praying together, the Holy Spirit came and filled them with His presence. In Acts 2, 1-11, after waiting for 50 days, finally, the disciples experienced Pentecost. All of us, we have been in this time of waiting, waiting for the day when things will be back to normal. It's been 75 days, long time already, since the lockdown. The lockdown may not still be lifted up and the normal things we used to do may not yet be back, but the Holy Spirit cannot be stopped to fill us with His presence and give us a fresh Pentecost experience. What happened to the disciples when the fire of tongues rested on them? It was a moment of Pentecost, and it started their missionary adventure with the Holy Spirit. From their Pentecost experience, 
we saw how the Holy Spirit really set them on fire. They were enabled to speak the good news in and no one and nobody could stop them in proclaiming the good news. The Holy Spirit was their guide on their missionary adventures and they of crisis in the world. It helped me the prayer in the past weeks. I was praying one passage in John 16, 13. It says, When however the Spirit comes, who reveals the truth about God, He will lead you into all the truth. The Holy Spirit leads us to different missionary adventures, like what happened to the first Christian community. He is the best companion to whatever adventures He will lead us. In these difficult times, He will unfold to us how we can face the situations we encounter in the ordinariness of our journey wherever we are. We are already facing the effect and consequences brought by this pandemic in many aspects, personally, as community, as a country, and in the global level. This is a challenging missionary adventure we are in. I believe we are trying to live in faith this time of crisis, but there are moments that we feel the uncertainties, fears, and worries of what is to come in the future. The Holy Spirit teaches us to seek consolation, comfort, and draw the strength we need from Him, to live in the truth that He is with us forever and will always guide us day by day. He only invites us to be sensitive to His actions in different moments of the day. When we feel disoriented, not knowing how to go about being just at home, or maybe in times that we are being pulled down with anxiety and desperation because the news we hear and read are only about going up statistics of new cases and hundreds and thousands of deaths. We can call out to Him because He is our consoler and companion. He is the one giving us consolation and comfort we need in moments of grieving, of loss, and pains that we encounter in life. What is He teaching us in front of realities that are in chaos, in a mess, and in darkness? The Holy Spirit unfolds to us a different perspective. He enkindles in us the fire of newness that He brings. In Psalm 104.30, The Holy Spirit comes to renew the face of the earth. He comes to renew our way of looking at our own realities and the situations of our world. Do we believe on the power of the Holy Spirit that can transform unpleasant or even crooked situations into something new? I had an ordinary missionary adventure during the time of ECQ, an adventure of cleaning up. I was helping one person to clean up two stock rooms in our place. These stock rooms has been left out for some years, maybe without being checked what is inside after our retreat house was constructed. As we entered the place, it was so messy and chaotic. All kinds of things were put everywhere, piled up one after another. In short, we didn't even know where to start and how to go about it. A lot of things to pull out, to sort out, and to organize and put them in order. It took us some days of patient dedication and hard work. This scenario helped me a lot. I realized sometimes we find mess and chaos in our lives and in the lives of people that we are reaching out in the mission. Perhaps a mess of feuds on properties and inheritance in the family, a chaos of disagreements and misunderstandings with others when our opinions are not heard and considered, a mess in midst of vices and addictions, and many others, or a chaotic life when we are trapped in our own bubbles and don't care what's going on with the others. Sometimes we want to fix or put in order our lives or situations in chaos and mess, but we can easily get tired. We just want to leave it behind and even give up on it. I had another tough 
missionary adventure in accompanying people in the mission. I recall a very difficult situation of someone whose marriage and family life is facing a stormy moment. I was trying my best to accompany the person and putting different means to help out with the situation. But it seems it's still in the rough waves the journey. I almost want to give up. One day in prayer, the Holy Spirit reveals to me that He alone has the power to fix whatever is in mess and chaos. He alone can put in order and never give up. He is a creative spirit who transforms us to a new creation and transform situations into something new. We don't realize many times that the Holy Spirit is at work in us and in people. He comes to renew us, to transform us, and enkindle in us hope, even at times we see the situations as impossible. In Romans 5.5, 5, the Holy Spirit brings hope that never disappoints, that never fails. He is the source and giver of life. He has the power to transform lives and whatever situations into something new. Of course, it is a challenge for us to be patient and hopeful and not to be harsh to ourselves and to people when it takes so long the change to happen or even we don't see any evidence of change at all. The Holy Spirit has the power to bring transformation when we allow Him to act in our lives. He is always at work in us, in our world, even we don't many times perceive it because He is silent and discreet. Maybe we can ask in our present situation, will there be something good to come from this pandemic crisis? The Holy Spirit will reveal to us the things to come in this new normal of our journey. Are you ready for a missionary adventure with Him in this new normal? Let us allow the Holy Spirit to unfold to us His ways that is very different from our ways. Pope Francis wrote a book, Life After Pandemic. On page 27, he mentioned about a new flame that all of us are called to bring throughout the world. A new flame of the good news that spring up in the night. This pandemic is a night that we face personally and all our brothers and sisters in different parts of the world. How is the new flame of God's word in us? Jesus said, How I wish this fire is already blazing in you. I saw in the life of our founder, Jaime Bonet, how he responded this desire of Jesus. One of his writings, the Herald of an Evangelizer, he expressed what is he on fire up? He showed to us what impelled him to live the mission faithfully to the end. Our founder dedicated his life on fire to change hatred into love, to change sadness into joy, anguish and despair into optimism and hope, sickness and death into life and resurrection. We can examine and ask ourselves, what are we on fire of? Are we on fire on the ways of our human nature or on fire of the spirit? Maybe we find ourselves at times on fire of irritation, of anger, impatience, self-righteousness, defensiveness, prejudices, and more. Come Holy Spirit, purify us and transform our hearts. Holy Spirit, enkindle our hearts to be on fire of the fruits you gave us. The Spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. This is in Galatians 5.22. He impels us instead to be on fire of patience when we are so impatient, to be on fire of love when we are boiling with irritation and anger, to be on fire of kindness and goodness towards others when prejudices come across our thoughts. This is our life. We all live by the Spirit, and we can reject this fire inside us. 
Jesus desire that our lives can set our homes and places on fire, on fire of His life and love. A life ablaze, on fire that no one can stop, nothing can contain. This fire inside us is contagious. It can reach as far as it can, beyond even what we can imagine. Like in the life of the apostles, how the flame of good news has spread the faith for generations. Why sometimes we find ourselves only with a spark of fire and not really on flame? Few weeks ago, we lit a fire on our backyard after we cleaned up our stock rooms. We were putting different things on a spark of fire like a bin of dried leaves, small pieces of old wood, also big cut of woods from broken doors that were very old. It caught my attention the dynamic of the fire. When we put only little leaves and wood on the fire, it increased only a little the spark. But when we put more leaves and more pieces of wood together, the fire became a big flame and it spread throughout the bonfire. When we are stingy on putting our time, our collaboration, our commitment, we get only a spark of fire. When the wind comes, since the fire is weak, it can be put off easily. Like when difficulties and trials come on our way, we easily get discouraged. We fall into anxieties in front of many problems. And we don't anymore persevere because the fire is slowly put off. But when we put more openness, more time in prayer, going out more from ourselves to share the word, we radiate a blazing fire. We are just on fire of God's love that no one can hinder and stop us in giving ourselves. We become generous and spontaneous in offering ourselves and being available to whatever is needed. People might think, missionaries are always on fire. Well, we also experience at times that the fire is only a spark or no fire at all. I had another missionary adventure in reaching out to people a few months ago. I was so enthusiastic and on fire to open a new apostolate in one university. I kept on going back to the university to get permission and to start an apostolate soon. But after many try, I received excuses that it's not yet possible. I felt discouraged that it seems my proposal was rejected. And the fire was almost puffed by the wind of discouragement and disappointment. In this moment, the Holy Spirit reminded me that He brings a hope that never fails. God has His own time. To trust in God's timing. This has ignited again the fire inside me, and it encouraged me to continue reaching out to young people without seeking for immediate results. We realize that when we leave the mission, depending on our own strength and human standards, the fire is not blazing at all. We need to depend more in the actions of the Holy Spirit, and not on our efficiency. What makes the fire ablaze in us is when we live by the Spirit and not by ourselves and opinion of people. Jesus sent us to be witnesses of this new flame that Pope Francis called us to bring to the world. This new flame of good news that is a contagion of hope. How can we be witnesses of flaming hope as we live a new normal? I think the new normal for us is to believe and experience that hope is not just an idea or a mere word we are used to say when we encourage people who are in difficulties and sufferings. Our hope is a person. We are not only hoping for something to happen or to come. Our hope is Jesus. He is our living hope that never fails us. In first. Peter 1, 3-4. This was the fruit of Easter. The Holy Spirit gives us a new vision to see around us many signs of flaming hope because Jesus is alive. How many frontliners risking their lives to protect the lives of many people affected? Their self-giving encourage us to put also our part in the ways we can. 
There are also so many people this time in the periphery of our communities who are most in need to receive the flame of hope. Look around us, the poor, the abandoned, the sick and dying, and many more realities. They are waiting to hear the good news, God's word that enkindles the fire of hope. Our experience here in Tagaytay is sharing the faith not only with words but in action. As many of our neighbors in the midst of ECQ still come and knock at our gate to ask for help not only for their basic needs but also express their struggles of not having work at the moment to sustain their families. Some ask for spiritual needs like funeral blessing, prayer for sick loved ones, how to live the mission in situations like this. It's really a call to be a witness of hope, of charity, and solidarity. The Holy Spirit also leads us to different moments of missionary adventures to live the mission in the new normal, like living the mission in the social media. For me, that I am not a millennial and I am very behind from digital generation, not being teke-teke is really an adventure and a challenge for me to use the technology. Last week, we were in adventure exploring how to use the Zoom for a school of the word and other apostolic activities online. It's amazing. We cannot stop the newness that the Holy Spirit brings for us to continue sharing God's word and be witnesses of hope. Today, let us allow the Holy Spirit to set us on fire, impelled to go for missionary adventures, to be witnesses of hope that can be contagious to others. If the coronavirus has a tremendous impact of infecting so many lives, let us not be afraid to transmit a living hope that has also a tremendous impact to lift up so many lives. This is now our missionary adventures in the new normal. Let us be witnesses of hope wherever we are. The transcendence of the missionary adventures of the apostles has reached for generations. We might think we are in missionary adventures when we are sent to another country, to another culture, that we need to learn a language or a challenging mission that we need to go. No, this takes place in the ordinariness of our everyday life. Let us believe on the transcendence of our missionary adventures that can bring more people to follow Jesus. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to fill us today. Come Holy Spirit, renew the face of our world. Make our lives ablaze. Impel us, Holy Spirit, to set our world in flame of the good news of hope.